Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we've got a sub five for you. So that's a five minute or less explanation. And this week, we're talking about DCAs. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So a DCA basically is a fader that is designed to turn up or down a group of faders. A uh, really practical example of this is if you have a great band mix, pastor walks out on stage to do a prayer, the band's playing behind him or her, and uh, you just want to bring the band down but not lose the mix that you have because you want to be able to bring it right back up as soon as that prayer is done, you can have one fader that will grab all those faders that you have assigned to it and turn them up and down. You can also use this to mute those channels or to solo those channels, but that is it. Uh, It's not used for any kind of processing. It's just volume control. Um, So today I'm going to show you if you have eight DCAs, which most boards do nowadays, uh, how you can use those to the best advantage for a full worship team. So here we're looking at the editing app for the Behringer X32. Um, Just because I'm using this board today doesn't mean that these concepts don't apply to other boards. Um, but on our first DCA here, I've got the drums and bass grouped together. Uh, so this is effectively the majority of your rhythm section. Uh, I do not generally give the bass guitar its own DCA because a lot of times it's one, maybe two channels. And I usually, um, keep my DCAs for things that have multiple channels or things that I find myself turning up and down, um, quite a bit during a service or during sound check. So the bass usually goes with the drums or the band, or in this case, both, Um, but it doesn't have its own generally. Next, I have my electric guitars. Um, Again, because I turn those up quite a bit uh, in certain sections and down in others, uh, they get their own DCA. I don't do that quite as much with acoustics, so I don't have the acoustics in this uh, DCA. They are being affected by the band DCA. Next, we have keys and tracks. Uh, The reason why the tracks are uh, grouped with the keys is because a lot of times uh, you're using your tracks uh, to fill in the things that keys can't do. Or if you don't have a keys player at all, a lot of times churches are using these to just fill in pads and that kind of thing. Um, Next, we've got the entire band DCA. Um, So you can have things affected by multiple DCAs. So all the drums are affected by this DCA, uh, the DCA1, and by the band DCA. Um, So if either one of those is muted, your signal's muted. If one's up and one's down, it's just an issue of math. Um, But both those faders are are affecting your individual faders. Uh, Next, we've got the worship leaders, WLs. Um, those are the people or person who is leading the service. So not necessarily leading every single song, but leading the service when it comes to worship. So the people who are, um, you know, directing the congregation, when to pray, what to pray over, when to sing, when to stand, all that good stuff. Um, so I want to be able to grab that DCA at any time and turn that person up or down. If they're trying to pray, uh, over top of a musical section, I can grab them no matter what I'm looking at on my left-hand side where my inputs are. The BVs or backing vocals is um, basically everyone else on stage who's singing. Um, So they've got a microphone, but they're not the worship leader or worship leaders. Then I designate them to this group so I can turn them up and down as I see fit. Um, Then we've got, this one's kind of a flex channel, but I generally set it up as a delay send. Um, So this allows me to do ramping effects on the delay effect that's on the worship leaders. Um, Really cool. And then finally, I always want to be able to grab the pastor's microphone, no matter what I'm looking at on my left-hand side, uh, because those transitions are so important, and you will really uh, have a not fun service if those aren't turned up in the right time. Um, So the pastor's mic or mics um, is always on a DCA for me, uh, at least nine times out of ten. So I'm going to show you real quick here um, is how on the X32 anyway to assign DCAs. It's very quick and easy. Um, If you're on the actual board, you would hold down the select button over the DCA you want. In this case, I'm just going to click the DCA button and then you go and select the channels. So I got drums and bass. We've got guitars on DCA. We've got keys 
and tracks, my entire band, Oops. my worship leaders, which are in this case are going to be one and two, my BVs, my delay send, and then finally my pastor's headset microphone. And that's it. You're done. I hope this was helpful for you and for your team. Uh, if you would like more information, because obviously this was a very fast explanation, um, we have a older video that's uh, a bit longer and has more audio examples. Um, I will put a link to it at the end of this video. Please go check that out. I think it's really useful stuff. I hope this has been great for you. Until next week, have a good day. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.